Hello and welcome to Global Water Partnerships Integrated Water Resource Management or IWRM Toolbox. My name is Nisha Midha and my name is Jerry Dong and we are the interns in the communications group at GWP. We hope that this video helps you understand what the toolbox is, who it's for, and how to use it. Towards the end of the video, we will also show you some examples of how others have used the toolbox in the past. So then, without further ado, let's continue. GWP produced the IWRM Toolbox with the vision of creating an internet-based repository of all knowledge on IWRM. We hope that the Toolbox is thus the first choice site for water practitioners, decision makers, and partners when they want to learn about IWRM. The goal of the Toolbox is to contribute to establishing a global communication platform which develops capacity in IWRM and shares knowledge to ultimately improve the way that water is managed. So why was the Toolbox created? First and foremost, we wanted to share all of the existing knowledge and experiences on IWRM in one platform. We also recognize that IWRM is a complex concept, and we want to be sure that it is being described in an academic, yet also useful way. Another reason the Toolbox was created is because there are so many examples of incredible real-life IWRM applications, and we wanted to highlight these. Last but not least, many other organizations and partners are producing useful reports, websites, and initiatives that we want to be sure are easily accessible. So who's the toolbox for? Generally speaking, it is primarily geared towards those who apply IWRM in their day-to-day -day work assignments. This includes, but is not limited to, practitioners, trainers, and capacity builders of IWRM. As well, we want to ensure that academia and researchers can come back to the toolbox for additional resources to support their own research. Finally, the toolbox is for decision makers who can and may impact water resources. Now we can move on to what the toolbox is. First, it consists of two parts, knowledge and learning. The GWP toolbox provides knowledge on how to manage water through two different means, tools and references. The first part of this section contains 60 tools which cover the crucial components of managing water. The second part of knowledge consists of references which range from technical papers to training manuals. To actually apply water management knowledge, the toolbox also helps with learning. This is done through case studies, which help demonstrate to users how tools and references have been used all over the world. The case study critically examines real-life projects and ultimately helps us apply new knowledge to our own ongoing projects. First, we'll look at the 60 tools that make up the toolbox. The tools provided are organized under three thematic areas of IWRM, the enabling environment, institutional arrangements, and the management instruments. The first set of tools are under the enabling environment. This tool set is what establishes a foundation for better water governance. The policies, legal framework, and investments and financing structures of a place set the stage of how water resources are managed. The next set of tools are under institutional arrangements. These tools identify key institutional roles and functions that need to exist for IWRM and better water governance to be achieved. For example, this set of tools discusses institutions that provide water supply and sanitation services, as well as coordination and facilitation bodies. The tools in this tool set are also outlined in the importance of capacity building at all institutional levels. The third set of tools are management instruments. Management instrument tools include all types of methods that establish the context of existing water resources so that decision makers can make informed decisions and take adequate actions. These tools range from risk and environmental assessments to modeling and pricing water. Let's move on now to how to use the tools. We recognize that 60 tools is a lot of knowledge and it's difficult to know where to start. The key thing to remember with the toolbox is that it's trying to encourage using IWRM, but IWRM is not simply a step-by-step -step process. Thus, the order of how to use the tools and which ones to use when is different in each situation. The toolbox is set up chronologically, assuming that no water governance system exists in your area. However, this is very theoretical, and in reality, we are sure that you likely have some tools already in place. Here are some simple do's and don'ts. 
First, we encourage using a variety of tools, but don't try to use them all at once. Tools should be carefully evaluated and chosen so that they fit your own context. Many of the tools are complementary, while others, such as the enabling environment, is a prerequisite to further implementation. With that in mind, choosing just one or two tools will likely not be enough for successful IWRM. Finally, changes can cause unintended or undesirable consequences. Monitoring and evaluating these tools as the tools are adopted is key to preventing these. Now that we've covered the tools, let's move on to how the knowledge from the tools can actually be implemented. The case studies are not actually explicitly within the toolbox, but rather linked to each tool. In other words, each tool has a pane on the right that links you to case studies of when they were used and how it worked or didn't work. You can also access all of GWP's case studies through the Learn tab at the top under Knowledge Resources. All of the case studies are arranged into continents and regions. Let's look at one case study as an example of the contents you will find. Each case study is presented on the GWP website as a one-page summary including a brief description, the actions taken, and the lessons learned. If you want to read further and understand more details, there will always be a link to the full-length case study to the right. Of course, we would like to encourage you to apply these lessons in your own location. However, if you ever need to contact the author for further discussion, contact information for each case study can also be found to the right of each case study summary page. It may be the case that your organization or region has applied some of the IWRM tools yourself. We encourage and love to receive new case studies. Check out the guidelines for our case studies at the link here and see if you fulfill the criteria for our GWP case studies. Once you're confident you have a good idea for us, please submit a proposal using the template provided within the guideline document. A newly added function of our toolbox is the knowledge search. This allows you to search for specific publications using keywords from 13 regions, 16 publication types, 12 topics, 11 languages, and of course, the year published. Finally, let's look at some ways that, that the toolbox has been used in the past. The first example is from the Mekong Basin, where it was identified that there was a lack of trainers and capacity on IWRM. The GWP toolbox was used in this instance to, de to develop a training manual that can be used to train trainers. The manual directly uses tools and the structure of the toolbox to help teach IWRM. In addition, the resources and publications in the toolbox were used as resources to support the manual's development. Here's another example of how the toolbox was used by the Partnership for Water Development in Africa. IWRM and the participatory process was applied in five countries in the Partnership by using the toolbox as a reference and a guide. Many of the management instrument tools were also used as a framework to analyze and understand the current water resource situation in each country. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation and that you have a better understanding of the GWP toolbox and how you may use it in your own work. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at toolbox.gwp.org. Thank you all for listening.